você vai vendo nesse momento? Uma... What you are seeing now is rebellion in the youth prison. Fire in the youth prison. Look at this. Look at these underage criminals breaking everything. Look at them climbing. They are climbing to their escape. I was there that day. I have been arrested 17 times. As a mother, I had to endure all of it. I had my first pregnancy when I was 14 and my son William was born. He had always been a quiet child, he was calm. But I hid who his father was from him. His father had abandoned me and I was hurt. I was angry at his father and I hid his identity from William. When he found out, because another son of mine told him who his real father was, he was heartbroken. For me, it was shocking because this messed up my mind. My means of escape was the world of drugs. That was when I got involved with drugs. I began by snorting cocaine. The first drug I used was cocaine. I had no boundaries to the point of getting arrested more than once within one week. I remember one of the episodes in which I was arrested on New Year's Eve. We even have images of this arrest. This was one of the times that I was arrested. I had been arrested many times. I remember that on this day, I had gone into my mother's house and the police followed me, armed with guns. I jumped out the back of the house, down a ravine. I was badly injured, but I managed to escape. There was a time where he disappeared for a few days. When he came back home, I had come from work in the evening and I remember that he was sitting on his bed in his room. I went over to him and I actually knelt down in front of him. I said, William, for the love of God, stop doing these things. Change your actions. Stop trafficking and stealing. Such was my despair. I had a sister who used to assist me a lot. She also worried a lot about him and had the idea of chaining him up. I never came to see him like that because I wouldn't have been able to handle it. It would have been too much. But I agreed to the situation because I was desperate. I didn't know what else to do. William was chained up, but my other son went there and unchained him because he pitied him. It was Christmas Eve and my son said, Mom, is William going to stay chained up on Christmas Eve? So he went and unchained him. However, releasing him was worse. It was worse because he wouldn't stop for anything. I didn't know how to act, but I had received an invitation and started going to the Universal Church. I began to learn there. The pastor would speak and teach how we should act our faith. So I began using my faith. I began making vows and campaigns. I would anoint his clothing. Then I understood that I needed the Holy Spirit and that I couldn't act by the strength of my own arm. So I sought and fought for myself. I sought and was baptized in the Holy Spirit. The weak and weeping mother died. I received strength and so I joined the evangelism group. I was raised as an assistant. I was fighting and in the faith that he would change, but he didn't. The situation got worse. He got even worse to the point when I was in a New Year's Eve night vigil working in the meeting when I received the news that he had been arrested once again. I saw my mother grow old prematurely. I saw her cry countless times. During this episode that she is talking about, where she went to the police station on New Year's Eve, who says that I got my head straight from then on? No, she would come home through one door and I would leave through another and go back to drug trafficking because the business couldn't stop. I went beyond the boundary, the limit of what I could do or imagine doing. I committed homicide in the neighborhood that I used to live in. There was even a news article at the time, it made the headlines, which is this one, saying that police investigators had started coming after me. Still, though I was on the run, I got even more involved in robberies because I thought I'll get caught sooner or later. Then came the day when I was arrested, and that was the 17th time that I had been arrested. There were 17 court cases. It was one court case after another. 
From there, I was sent to a youth prison, and even inside, I committed other crimes, to the point of taking part in rebellions. In the first week that I was sent to the youth prison here in Brass, there was a rebellion. I was involved in this rebellion. That was when, after countless mistakes and hitting my head on the wall, the Universal Church began their work in youth prisons and I started taking part in their meetings. By taking part in these meetings, I started to be interested. I remember that there was an assistant, Mr. Noel, who would go there every other Thursday. So, I took part in the meetings every fortnight. After one of the meetings that we had there, William and I had a conversation afterwards. This contact was very interesting because after the meeting, he asked me for a Bible. I only had my own Bible, which was very worn and used. He asked me for a Bible and I said, look, William, I don't have a new Bible to give you. I only have this one. He said, it doesn't matter. That's the one I want. He embraced that Bible and carried on with his life. That episode really stuck with me. And truly, I really embraced that Bible. I truly surrendered myself, body, soul and spirit. I really wanted a change. Also, during the assistant's preaching, he would always talk about the baptism in water. That was when Bishop Geraldo came there and baptized me. At the time, assistants weren't allowed to baptize us, so the bishop came there and baptized me in water. From then on, many things changed. Then, I understood the need to have the Holy Spirit, and I began to seek Him. I remember that late at night, when everyone was asleep in the cell, I would go to a corner and seek the Holy Spirit there. A time came when the assistant spoke about the campaign of Israel, during a prison visit, I asked my mother what this was about. She told me what the campaign of Israel was and she told me about everything that she had done and the sacrifices that she had made. I told her, Mom, I am also going to make my own sacrifice. Every inmate learns how to make things in jail, hats, picture frames and so on. And I began to work on my own craft and would send them to my mum. I created my own envelope. I remember that I took a green paper folded it and drew a bonfire like it was bonfire night because I didn't know what the campaign of Israel was and I wrote campaign of Israel I made a request I said I don't want to get out I want to have a transformed life my mom placed her sacrifice with mine and she went to the altar To give you an idea, my aunt had already given a car to a lawyer in trying to solve my problem and to get me out of there. Nothing had solved it. What solved it was the altar. It didn't take long. 17 days later, I was released. I went straight to church on a Tuesday. I remember that I had a very strong experience with God that day. First of all, I used to think, I am not worthy to have the Holy Spirit. In my entire family, I was the worst. However, though I was unworthy to have the Holy Spirit, God gave himself to me. That day was remarkable. I was in front of the altar and I sought him with all my strength. The worst person, the worst person, the one who didn't deserve anything. And God gave me his all, which was him living in me. So, for me, this was very good. I remember that I left that meeting and there were loads of young people from the church there. I wanted to give them what I had received. From then on, everything changed. I cannot describe the joy and peace that I have today. After I received the Holy Spirit, a great desire to do the work of God was born in me. I had already made this vow in the past. While in jail, I had said, when I get out, I am going to be a pastor. Soon after, I was raised as an assistant. A year later, I was raised as a pastor. I have the privilege of serving God as a pastor, not to have a title, but I said, gosh, I did so much wrong. I took lives, 
Now I will save lives, I will save souls from someone who was a criminal and confined to a youth prison. I do this work today in our social educational group. In fact, this unit was one of the ones I had stayed in. I met a woman of God, I met Amanda, I married her. In fact, I married the daughter of a policeman. Someone who lived the life that I did got married to a policeman's daughter. God goes above and beyond. He really does the extraordinary to show us just how great He is. Look, my wedding was in this church. The altar on which my mother had placed my life through a sacrifice of the campaign of Israel was the same one that I went up on to seal my covenant with my wife. I made sure to get married there. My son, I had said that I used to be ashamed, and truly, I was ashamed of the situation that we went through with you. But today, I am proud of you. I see how great God is through the transformation He brought to your life. Today, I am proud to have a son like you.